Now I'd like to introduce you to somebody very special in my life. Her name is Leslie Boucher. She is not only our chairman of the board, but she is also an incredible resource for me in success in the city. Um, her company, Pensar Group, and we met actually through networking, actually helps companies build teams, find organizational results and resources. She also helps you do strategy, which is really funny because this is the conversation. I share a home office with my husband and I'll be on the phone. Leslie, I have an idea. And my husband goes, Leslie, hang up now, leave now. And she always stays there. But there are times when her phone disconnects and I go, she hung up. I'm not believing it. We now wanted to do something really fascinating. So Leslie and I, because this is a lot of what she does in companies, is help you build relationships. So Leslie's going to come up and share some tips and techniques and things that we're going to do, an exercise we're going to do together. So um, Leslie, and we've got a couple people over here at this table. Maybe you want to join in another table since we want to have, you know, a really lively debate. So Leslie, thank you. I'm so glad you're here. And thank you for putting up with me the way you do. It's amazing. <laughs> thank you. I appreciate it. Well, I have to congratulate Mary because you actually accomplished three things I have never seen before at a Success in the City event. So I wish Jen Sterling was here. She was the chair uh, last year prior to me. And Jen always talks about Success in the City being an organization where we like to kick off our heels and connect as women. And I don't think we ever actually have <laughs> kicked off our heels. So that was the first thing that was cool. The second thing was there was 15 minutes of silence at a Success in the City event. Robin, has that ever happened? Yeah. No, never, never, it never, never. never it may never happen again. And the third thing that was remarkable was that everybody actually followed the instructions. So that's got to be the Danish influence in the room, because that is not this group normally. So thank you again, and, and thank you, Rupal and, and Senia, and all of you guys for coming and joining us this morning. It's fabulous. So the question um, that Cynthia and I were discussing and and that we shared with our board, and I want to just actually, Catherine, say hi, another Hello. board member in the corner. Thank you for joining us. Did I miss anybody? That's it for our, our board members. Uh, but the question we were discussing is, how can we leverage this fabulous opportunity to ensure that, that we meet an obligation to our members and to you guys who are visiting? And that obligation is, what's the highest and best use of our time? When we get together, this is such a unique opportunity. How can we make sure that everybody walks out with one of two things? One, either great new connections, so valuable connections that you didn't have before you came in, or number two, something you learned that you can put into practice. Now I know, Mary, you've already helped us with the second one because I'm, I'm, with my teenage kids, I'm going to be doing this, because that's kind of talk to the hand, but I can say it was yoga, right? Or I can, right? Or I can go like this, I'm just getting some doing? space here, space, you know, before I yell. Okay. So, um, so I know we've already off to a great start with valuable insights and things that we can take away, but we thought it would be great if we could sit as tables and just ask ourselves a couple of questions. And we wanted to focus the discussion a little bit, so we put a little structure around Around it. On your table, there are a list of questions, table topic discussions. Now, on your table, there should be a yellow highlighted version of this document. Can you find the, the amongst all the paper, can you find the document that on your table that's got yellow highlighter? Okay, perfect. So find the ones that are uh, highlighted. And the idea is for you to spend the next 15 or 20 minutes talking about the topic that is highlighted at your table. Now, since Success in the City women don't follow instructions really well, I'm already going to tell you it's fine if you decide you want to do a different topic. <laughs> but uh, we wanted to start by saying, suggesting that the topic that's highlighted at your table would be the one you could start with, and then if you want to move on, that's fine. And the objective out of this is for you to be able to share with us at the end of 20 minutes two valuable insights at your table that you would like to share, because the wisdom in this room is fabulous. And we want you to share the discussions. Don't hog it, OK? Share it with the group afterwards. So 15 or 20 minute discussion. The topics, I'll go over them quickly here. There's a leadership question about what assets do the women on your leadership team or those you work with contribute to the success of your business? Uh, work and life integration. We don't like talking about balance because we don't actually believe the balance. The balance is kind of a 50-50 notion and personally I've never experienced it one day in my life. So we talk about integration, okay? 
Uh, what steps have you taken to manage and integrate work and home to be less stressful? So building on the stress topic. What's the biggest change you have seen in making those changes? Uh, we have a, a topic on social media and social networking. How are you using social media in your personal and professional life and business? And you can read the rest of the question. For uh, the table that has futurists, innovation, and creativity highlighted, we're asking you, have you had to make changes or shifts in your business or company? And if so, how did you go about making that happen? What creative approaches, ideas have you launched? The question continues, and you can finish reading that one. Uh, looking at your business in new ways. Okay, similar theme, slightly different question. Have you attempted to bring outside the box thinking to your business that resulted in a successful or positive, positive outcome for you? Okay. And the final question, building a personal and professional support network like we're doing here today. I'm already uh, up, signed up for helping one of my new friends who's uh, house hunting <laughs> and looking for schools here, who's going to be coming over from Denmark. So my new connection is to help <laughs> suggest uh, schools that might be useful in the Bethesda area. So um, that question, who is on your support team at home, at work, and in your own professional world? What's working for you and what is not? But let me just ask, who had the leadership topic highlighted? OK, two quick insights. Oh, gosh, we got a list. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we'll come back to you after. What's the two, your two favorite? Larger companies um, tend to have less female leaders. And we see that men tend to work in partnerships where they treat each other equally, and women do not. Interesting. Um, and so we see more advancement. It's like they help each other up the ladder. Okay. Um, be the advisor or the expert when it comes to leadership. Be the advisor or the expert when it comes to leadership. Okay. Instead of being the producer. Instead of being the producer. Okay. All right. Excellent. And did you find it was pretty common between the two different cultures and communities we come from? Very different? Similar. Similar. Yeah, similar. Similar. Okay. Interesting. And we Excellent. want to have all those back because we're going to put those together so we can share with everybody what the Super. findings were. Can I give you one more? Yes, you can. The Q-tip rule. Quit taking it personally. Oh, I love it. The Q-tip rule. <laughs> Quit taking it personally. Who came up with that? Where did that come from? Uh, Robin, that I, is I've brilliant. never heard that. That's great. It's something that I learned from the parent encouragement program. Oh, I love it. Q-tip. That's very That's good. That's great advice. Thank you. Who had work and life integration? We did. We did. Okay. <laughs> what, what are two good insights from your discussions? Okay. Flexibility and making time for yourself. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> Marry a husband that will help out in the house. That's that is good. So I have to get divorced now and find. <laughs> Thank you, group. <laughs> yeah, life changing moments. <laughs> Excellent. Thank you. And now I'm going to ask you the same question. Were the insights? Was there commonality? Or you said, "Wow, that's really different in my country." Where did you fall? Was it? Uh, commonality, I think. Commonality. Isn't that interesting? Okay. A little bit of difference, though, in, in how, how the, uh, when women have children, there's a, dif a difference in how the, the women get to take time off to have the kids. Oh, yeah, in, the, in Denmark, you get to. Right. <laughs> I get it. I'm Canadian, and when I told people I took six months maternity leave, they're like, what? I mean, just people here just think that's so yeah, wild. <laughs> wow. Okay. Social media and social networking. That was over here. Let me move over here. So what, uh, what good tips did you guys have? Or were you just tweeting them all? <laughs> uh, well, I think... Uh, Basically, we were talking about how small businesses can use social media. That was that was what we landed on, and I and I think what we can conclude is that it's different in different businesses, and that uh, maybe you need to pick one tool and make that work for you because it does take time to build up the relationship mm -hmm. and to actually make social media work for your business, no matter what kind of business you have. So it was a really interesting conversation about that. We talked a lot about not having time to either post or tweet, or link, 
or whatever, and on the other side to measure our effectiveness. So there are tools out there. We were talking about social oomph, mm -hmm. Hootsuite and Tweet, the Twitter uh, or um, Tweet, tweet deck, deck, thank you, <laughs> for the pre-posting because you can schedule it. And then things like Nutshell Mail to measure what's going on just as a way to get your hands around the social media. The idea being to engage people over time so that they remember you, retain you, and refer you to their friends. Wow. Did you get that? <laughs> there was a lot over here. That was really good. Can I just ask, though, our table had an interesting insight on social media. Uh, maybe you guys could just share a little bit about how your group uses social media. So we'll come back over here. Sorry, a little deviation from the plan. Well, like your group, you, our network is a lot about sharing, sharing needs and sharing ideas and sharing experiences and to hype each other and like each other and bring each other forward. And we do that a lot in social media. Actually, we are um, in contact on a daily basis and we like each other a lot on Facebook, <laughs> and uh, uh, yeah, and uh, and uh, write sort of good reviews on each other uh, on a daily basis to bring each other forward. I mean, men would do that any day, so we do the same. And what I found interesting was the statement that it's not as common in Denmark to no. do this kind of thing. You guys are kind of paving the way a little bit. Yeah, we, we try to learn from your guys. You guys. <laughs> Isn't that interesting? I thought that was fascinating. Thank uh, I, you. I have a little story to that. One of our fellow all writers who is not here today, she was uh, an IT reporter and she was sitting at this Dell conference in Copenhagen where the director of Dell actually was there. And the Danish moderator, he said that, uh, oh, this is so great. IT is still one of the areas where women have not come, so we have it for ourselves. So. If the, when you come home, there was only five women there out of, I don't know, 200 people. And he said, go home and say, shut up, bitch, to your whatever if they want something. Exactly. And she was twittering this. And the whole of the Albright group supported it. And it actually went to the Dell headquarters. And just yesterday, there's been an excuse from Dell to this whole uh, conference. So, so he was just thinking sitting there and obviously he was making fun but it was just being really condescending Absolutely. to the women present uh, and and that's just to to show how powerful it can be that somebody else is giving it a take because a lot of gay guys said to 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 this woman oh you're being hysterical you know he was just making oh, fun yeah. Yeah, yeah. but then the old bride group girls come in and say no she's not you know yeah. he's being hysterical you know yeah. so yeah isn't that amazing and the power that we have yeah. it's amazing right it's yeah. a small group but all of a sudden you can have this huge impact but actually, i wanted to say that um, she what she did was she kept writing blog posts and you know we were commenting on that and it was sent all over denmark and it was hot in the media and and then actually it got so much press that Dell had to write an apology. Mm -hmm. uh, Dell headquarters in uh, America. So it actually reached a very little, little audience in Denmark and went worldwide in yeah. like two or three weeks. Isn't that amazing? And then they, of course, said that uh, that was not their intention and they have programs where they want to encourage women. <laughs> 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 it was some special Danish humor that they didn't understand. And, and, Oh. Oh. oh, it was a language issue. Oh, yeah. Oh. Oh, yeah. OK. And, and the humor issue. Oh, yeah. right. Yeah. Women just don't have it. We just don't get it. Oh, we don't have it. <laughs> this group has a sense of humor. Oh, that's how much I know. All right, thank you so much. So futurist innovation and creativity. Which table was that? Is that you guys? So what, what are two good insights from that discussion? What, uh, what we talked about uh, with our futurist, uh, so we were very lucky to have her, um, is that you need to um, find the intersection between meaning and a new perspective. A good idea is something you already know, but looked at or turned around on its head and done differently. And that's where new companies are really succeeding and um, being disruptors. Um, and then um, the thought, too, is that you need to look not from inside yourself, what you can do going outside, but look outside coming in, what does the world need, uh, and then come in, how can you add to it. Uh, and so by turning the model upside down, you'll really think of um, 
your ideas in a different way and bring the new perspective and the deeper meaning that it takes to have a really good idea and make it successful. Great. 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 Thank you. Well done. <laughs> See, at every table I think, boy, I wish I was there. I wish I'd been you all in, folks. This table even made their own diagram. <laughs> oh, my. No. You need to visit them and check this out. <laughs> we'll, we'll send it. Um, uh, we'll send it to the website. Uh, we'll make it a PowerPoint. Why don't you leave all that material with us because we're going to share it with the group because it's so rich, rich data. It's going for all of us to use. Excellent. Thank you. Uh, looking at business in new ways. Our table. What were our two insights? Yeah, I think uh, one very important insight shared around the, the table was that a crisis can be a great opportunity to look at your business in a new way. It can be seen as Sam's broken leg or uh, a death in the family or something less dramatical but also very uh, critical in your life. Um, Another insight, I think, was uh, that one can look at what one needs and then try to build it, and that can be that was how success in the city was made, and uh, and that creating a business actually just by looking at what you really need in your life right now and then building it. And I think the last very important thing, at least that I took down, was if you look at what satisfies your soul <laughs> and try to build that, that definitely takes your business in a new way. In a in a new direction. Gosh, we were such a smart table. <laughs> Weren't we? Because <laughs> wow. I was a little worried. There were a lot of really good insights over here, yeah. so there was a lot yeah. of pressure building. Yeah, I know, I know. You delivered, you delivered. You delivered. Yeah, powers. thanks. Appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, building a personal and professional support network. That was over here. That was the last we, we worked on implementation on the yeah. support network. <laughs> yes, rather than discussing the concept. <laughs> yeah, we were just right to the, to the point. So we were talking about all sorts of ways we could work together and, and do conferences <laughs> together. So yeah, so we, we kind of went to that level already. And then I think they did the same over on, on the other side of the table. So Yeah, we did the same. And then we also discussed the importance of within your network having mentors. Um, on personal levels, professional levels, uh, folks that can guide you, that you can bounce ideas off of, but that can also pave the way and, and from whom you can learn um, from past experiences. So, so we could, uh, a new term I learned recently too is not only a me mentor others, but to find a sponsor. And if you're not familiar with the term sponsor, it's the person inside your work environment, your corporation, who's going to put their neck on the line for you to say they're going to be the person in that closed door meeting that goes, I want Susan to get this job. She can do it. But you have a great deal of responsibility to deliver on behalf of your sponsor. So you have to develop relationships throughout your career with that key person who's going to be in the board meeting, who's going to go to bat for you and say, this person can do it, should do it, deserves to have it. And especially women need to, men do that throughout their career. They develop those sponsor relationships. So mentor, be mentored, mentoring. But a sponsor is somebody who's gonna gonna at that meeting say this is who should get the job. But then you've got a huge responsibility not to let that sponsor down because they put their neck on the line for you. Mm -hmm. And actually, to that point, Cynthia, um, I just wanted to share this experience on, on this networking. Um, when I decided to go solo as as an attorney and I needed exactly this mentorship, I wasn't sure the best way to do it, and I wasn't sure if I should have a one-on-one -on -one mentor. So what I actually did was asked um, some senior immigration lawyers who I had worked for and who meant a lot to me to be my informal board of directors. And we hold a board of directors meeting two times a year where I report to them on the growth of the firm or issues that I'm having problems with as a solo practitioner. And then they, through their wisdom and years of experience, come back to me and provide informal guidance. Um, and that's been absolutely invaluable and also very, I feel very secure knowing that I have three guys behind me to bounce <laughs> ideas off of. So I think that's really important. So it's almost like having your own personal board of directors. So it's, it's just saying, hey, am I in the right place doing the right thing? Am I on the right path in my career? What are you hearing? I mean, we like to kind of come up with more of a quid pro quo. We, we do have a board, but we like to, to quid pro quo, meaning that this is what I think we need, but what do you need? It's, it's always you should bring to the table to give back. And we have a saying at Success in the City, which I took from somebody else who shared it with me, which is that the open hand of giving is always full. So I think that's kind of a, a good place to kind of wrap it up. It yeah. absolutely is. I just want to thank everybody again. And I know for the Albright women, you know this quote well. But just in case there's anyone in the room who has not heard Madeleine Albright's famous quote, 
about a special place in hell for women who don't help other women. So I think uh, I didn't didn't want to go to hell. So I am so happy that we did this. And I just think I encourage everybody to keep exchanging cards, make the connections. If anybody needs to connect through somebody between either Cynthia or RuPaul, we can we can definitely do that if you don't make the direct connection here today.